Hey there, good afternoon. I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And it's in, we're in Missouri, it's summertime, it's extremely hot, and, and most of the state is under a pretty bad drought right now. But what comes with extremely hot temperatures and of course to add on top of it, that drought are fish, kill, fish kills here throughout the state in a lot of different places, but mainly we're talking ponds today. And I'm actually gonna be joined here with MDC's Andrew Branson and here on Habitat Hints this week we're going to be talking about fish kills and how they happen, why they happen, and what you can do to kind of try and prevent that. Um, let me turn this around and we'll, we'll talk with Andrew to get more information on that. Hey there Andrew, how are you today? Hey Lucas, doing good, okay. Good, good. So Andrew, we're talking fish kills today. So tell us a little bit about fish kills and first, why do fish kills happen? Right. Yeah, the, uh, the type of fish kill most people are going to be experiencing is what's called a low oxygen fish kill. So that's not a fish kill where you had a pollutant get into the water or some sort of harmful chemical. It's a, it's, it's a low oxygen condition. Your pond hasn't had any changes and nothing added to it except the conditions that can create this low oxygen. And you say conditions, and one of those conditions uh, right off is going to be extremely uh, hot temperatures, correct? That's right. Yep, definitely. Uh, warmer water holds less oxygen than cooler water, so fish kills are more likely going to be happening in the summertime. And, of course, it's made even worse, like you said, with this hot weather, this drought we're having now. So that, that makes low oxygen conditions. Now, I know that we've had a couple already or, that I know of here in central Missouri, and not even in ponds, but... Uh, Talking ponds and how is it? It's so difficult to kind of manage that, and how you make sure you don't have one. What What would you like to tell landowners at home? What they should be aware of, right? And how can they kind of avoid it? Yeah, uh, there are conditions that kind of will lead up to a fish kill, and a landowner needs to kind of recognize if their pond is going to be more susceptible to a fish kill during the heat of the summer. And the big thing is the depth of the pond. Um, there's this magic number of about eight feet. Mm -hmm. If a pond is at its deepest point less than eight feet deep, it could be susceptible to having a fish kill during the heat of the summer um, when all of that pond water is gonna be warming up. Deeper ponds, you've got some cooler areas down below. Um, but again, with a drought like this, where you don't have water coming into the pond, the pond's evaporating, you may have started the summer with a deep pond, but now it's gotten below that eight foot mark. Uh, which means you could be gearing up for a fish kill. Uh, the other thing that sucks oxygen from the water during these times is excessive aquatic plants. So if a pond is leading up to the summer and it's got lots of aquatic plants that are becoming a nuisance, you know, aquatic plants are good, but if you've got too many, if you've got a big algae problem, uh, all of those plants produce oxygen during the day, which sounds great, but when the sun goes down, they start pulling oxygen from the water. And if you already have a warm water condition, a shallow pond, lots of plants that are pulling oxygen, you may wake up in the morning to a fish kill. And that's kind of the next thing people want to know about is, okay, I've had a fish kill, now what do I do? Yeah, I mean, fish kills are, so basically just kind of keeping in check, hey, uh, making sure that your pond stays above that eight foot level at the deepest point and kind of make sure you don't have too many. What, it, what when you say too much um, uh, plants on the side of the, in the water and so forth, how, what is too much and what is not enough? How, how do you kind of go by that? Yeah, we, uh, uh, I think we recommend somewhere if you've got around 20 to 30% coverage of your, your pond or lake, that's okay. If you start getting above that, if you start getting into 40 to 50%, then you're looking at excessive and uh, and then you need to be treating that, you know, starting to eliminate some of that, you know, before the, the summer gets here. Because once the summer is here, you got the low oxygen. You don't want to be spraying and killing plants at that point because that's just going to pull even more oxygen out of the water. Now, key here, I mean, I know we kind of touched on it, but for those at home, you know, landowners don't understand why their fish are dying. Can you explain to them how that and why that happens? Yeah, again, uh, most people, there's no sign that they're going to have a fish kill. Uh, they'll just walk out one morning and they'll see dead fish floating. And sometimes it can be a few, sometimes it can be a bunch. Uh, but either way, it's pretty dramatic and can be scary to a lot of folks. Um, the thing to know is, is if all of a sudden you're going through a fish kill, like I said, it, uh, 
it's going to happen during the night. The fish typically die close to morning. Um, during the day, you won't typically have more fish die because, again, the plants and everything are producing oxygen. But fish kills, if you have one, they have to kind of run their course. They usually last about three days, so you may notice new dead fish for the next two or three days, and then it's over. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do to really shorten the fish kill. Uh, some people have gotten out in boats with motors to try to aerate the water. Um, they'll spray water in the air from a hose. That might help a little bit, but to be honest with you, it just kind of has to run its course. The other question we get is, what do I do with all these dead fish? You know, do I need to get them out of the water? And the answer is you really don't. Um, scavengers will come and get the ones during the night that they can get. Uh, if you can, if, it's, if you can get some out, you may want to dip them out and just pitch them over the bank so they don't wash back in. But to be honest with you, uh, it's not that important. The fish kill will run its course either way, and then it'll be over. Um, but uh, yeah, fish kills can be a scary thing, but prevent, preventing a fish kill by making sure your aquatic plants are under control and being aware of the depth of your pond is important. So most of your fish kills are usually from low oxygen. That's right. Correct. Yep. I mean, that, that's the... That's the number one topic we want to hit here. I mean, I mean, other things could happen as well, but mostly it's low oxygen. Right. And, and the biggest key, I mean, I know we're going to get this question a lot is, hey, I had a fish kill. When, is the, when can I restock fish? Well, that's, that's a good question. The, the thing about fish kills is as bad as they look, they rarely, if ever, wipe out a pond. So, and most ponds actually need some thinning of the fish anyway. They may have, you know, uh, too many bass in there, a lot of small stunted bass, uh, crappie the same way. So sometimes fish kills can actually help thin out a pond. Um, I don't want to say we want to encourage fish kills, but uh, usually you do not need to restock. Um, you get those fish out of there um, and your pond will come back just fine. I've talked to some folks who had major fish kills and they didn't restock and they, two years after the fish kill, they say, boy, my pond fishing is better than ever. You know, um, they haven't had a fish kill since, but if you do have a shallow pond, if you know that, well, my pond is at, at its deepest point uh, during good times of the year, it's usually about eight feet, it gets shallower in the summer, uh, that might be a pond where you may want to invest in like a fountain or some sort of spray system um, rather than uh, renovating the whole pond, digging it out, draining it, drying it out, and scooping it out, and making it deeper. But shallow ponds, yeah, just be aware. Keep the plants under control, add an aeration device possibly, and, okay. uh, and then... Yeah. And we can get more information at Andrew on this. Where can we find more information yep, on uh, it's, fish kills? It's, it's a real common question that we get. So we've got some great information on the Department of Conservation's website. You can just go on there and type in fish kills and it'll pop right up. All sorts of good information. We've got, I think, some videos talking about fish kills. But then, of course, we've got our, our, our regional fisheries management biologists for the counties, and that's a great contact as well. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Andrew. And again, I'm going to echo what he said. If you want to find out more information about fish kills and how to prevent, trying to prevent fish kills on your pond, be sure to check out our website at mdc.mo.gov.